Another year is coming to an end, and that means it's time for me to do another top 10 list for my favorite indie games of this year. Now, if you remember last year, I don't have too many rules when it comes to these lists. A, I have to play them, and B, nothing else. It can be early access, it can be fully released, it can be alpha, it doesn't have to be on Steam, it doesn't even have to be a certain genre, as long as I feel that it's indie. You are entitled to disagree with me on any of these, but this is my list, so this is what I am giving you my opinion on. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Number 10. Ollie Ollie's a skateboarding game developed by Roll7. Unlike other skateboarding games where it's all about tricks, Ollie Ollie focuses more on rhythm-based landings. Hitting the X button at the right time may mean a difference between success or a bail. It uses a very similar trick scheme to that of the Skate series, where different rotations on the D-pad create different sorts of flip tricks or grinds. The game is definitely over the top and extremely difficult to master, but when you ride that perfect line on a level you've been trying to master for hours, you cannot help but put a smile on your face. Number 9. Nidhogg is a side-scrolling two-player fencing game developed by Mark Messhoff Essen. I enjoy Nidhogg so much because it's all about timing and strategy. The battles are quick, usually ending with one attack, and the whole tug-of-war system behind each level is very enjoyable. The goal is simple, outfight your opponent and get to his side of the screen. He'll be doing the same thing trying to get to your end. The person that makes it wins and the winner gets the reward of being eaten by a flying serpent. Overall, Nidhogg is the definition of indie games. Unique, fun, and challenging. Number 8. The Escapist is a lighthearted view of prison life. You're an inmate at various levels of security prisons, and your objective is simple. Get the hell out of there. Where this game truly shines is how difficult and how many ways you can do that task. Admittedly, I've never been successful in escaping. The game takes a lot of patience and trial and error. Beyond the end goal of escaping, you are a prisoner and have a daily schedule like any other prisoner. You have your daily duties of jobs and tasks like eating and working out. You can choose to obey the, the law and do those things or cause trouble. Beat up a guard, steal a prison keycard, dig through walls, go through events. The possibilities are endless in The Escapist. How will you succeed? Number 7. If fucking adorable was a genre, Lovely Planet would be the bestseller. This game makes me lose any sort of manliness when I'm playing it because I cannot stop adoring all the cute pastel visuals. At least I can say I'm playing an FPS when I play it. I might be using a magical wand to shoot little sparkly purple pixels, but damn does it kill some cute ass enemies. Lovely Planet is a speedrunning FPS where you're put into a level and the whole goal is to get to the other side of the level as fast as possible. The gameplay is very enjoyable and if you can get beyond the cutesiness, it is an extremely competitive game with a very skilled audience. Number 6. Wreckfest, more formally known as Next Car Game, is a demolition racer with an absolutely epic game engine. The game makes crashing and destruction truly beautiful. I've never seen a racing game have so much demolition but feel so polished to drive at the same time. Bugbear Entertainment, the same people behind the successful Flat Out series, have really overdone themselves with Wreckfest. It's a game all publishers avoided, so Bugbear went to the next thing. Crowdfunding. And people talked. The hype behind this game is huge for a good reason. Bugbear makes some of the best racing games out there, and they are doing exactly this with Wreckfest. Number 5. Fract OSC is a music-based puzzle game created by Fosfen Systems. Definitely the most abstract game on my list, Fract OSC throws you into a world filled with a neon palette and some absolutely epic musical instruments. I have honestly seen people produce good music with the equipment given to you in this game. The world is breathtaking, the music and puzzles are difficult, and the reward for playing is absolutely awesome. Number 4. I'll admit the vanishing of Ethan Carter from a gameplay perspective isn't my cup of tea. That's not to say it's bad because it definitely isn't, but what made me enjoy this game so much is the atmosphere. I am not lying when I say this is the most beautiful game I have ever seen. The world gives you a sense of mystery and almost sadness, but every now and then you'll get a peek of how beautiful and immersive this small world is. Visuals aside, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter is a story-driven puzzle adventure game where you take control of a detective called Paul Prospero and is on the case to solve The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. The game does an amazing job in going into the mind of a detective in terms of the puzzles. When you see a clue, it shows itself as if the detective was trying to solve the larger picture. What is also interesting is this game is totally an open world. Most puzzle games are very linear. This one, you go into the world and choose which puzzles you want to do at any given time. 
The Vanishing Vlan Carter is absolutely beautiful, and I recommend it to anyone. Number three. Released in February of 2014, Banished is a city-building strategy game where you control the lives of a small village and do your best to prepare for the dreaded winters. A lot of people are calling it the savior to city management strategy games, Banished quickly got attention and left people astonished knowing it was developed by only one man. What I like so much about Banished is the sense of danger. In other city builders you have a population of usually thousands if not tens of thousands, a good city in Vanish rarely goes over a population of 1,000, and you have to strategically use every villager to ensure a survival of winter or other natural issues. Vanish showed us that you don't need a huge team or budget to make an absolutely epic city sim. Just a unique vision and a little passion. Number 2. Probably the most unknown game on my list, but definitely one that I truly cherished is Quadriga, developed by Turnopia. Quadriga is a chariot racing management simulation where you control a team of chariot racers that tour the various circuses in ancient Roman times. No video could honestly do this game justice. The strategy and feel of this game might look bland and boring, but it is absolutely epic if you take the time to understand it. You not only choose your plan of action while racing, but also when you're gearing up. Each class and item has their own unique attributes. Some people might choose a lighter chariot and horses that move faster but are more prone to attacks and injuries, whereas other players might choose a heavy chariot and stronger riders that can last the distance. Quadriga is extremely challenging and a pleasure to play. However, be prepared to pay a pretty penny. As I write this, the game is still over $20 and is truly why this game isn't more well known. Number 1. They told me I was too young. They told me I needed more training. Huh? I told them to drop dead. Released in July of 2014, Crypt of the Necrodancer is a rhythm-based dungeon crawler roguelite. It blends the genres of rhythm games like Guitar Hero and DDR with the intense action of New Age roguelites like Binding of Isaac and Splunky. This unique blend of genres is something we haven't really seen before, and it leaves for a new style of strategy. Instead of focusing on stats and avoidance, you are looking at things like distances from the enemy and timed attacks. When a game can make a new unique fighting system, I am immediately enticed because of how difficult it is to come up with something that hasn't been done before. Crypt of the Neck Dancer gets my top spot for this reason. It's fun, beautiful, and most importantly, very unique. So that's it, another year down the drain and another indie top 10 list complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this year. It's been a crazy year for indie games. There's been so much coming out. It was really, really hard to drop it down to 10 games because I play so many of them. I also want to personally thank each and every one of you for your continued support. I mean, it's been an amazing year for the channel and I truly, truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. I hope we can have another fun year and do another top 10 indie list next year. So let's get started on that right now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.